28. Describe the molecular geometry and the hybridization of the nitrogen, phosphorus, or sulfur atoms in each of the following compounds. And then we have K4O3POPO3, which is potassium pyrophosphate, an ingredient in some toothpaste, but not all of them. I wonder which ones. I guess just look at your, uh, your ingredients list, right? I guess they'll tell you there. But anyway... We're going to find out that molecular geometry and the hybridization, specifically of phosphorus, because I don't see any nitrogens or sulfurs here. Now, the first thing that I see is I see that I have a metal, right? And remember, metal compounds are always ionic. When you're searching for a molecular geometry and a hybridization, it's always for covalent compounds. So I have to break this up into its components to figure out, well, which one is the covalent component? So I can use my subscripts to figure out, you know, the crisscross method to just see what the ions were. Now, it seems like this whole thing is going to stay together and there's only one of them, right? And that one crisscrosses up telling me that the potassium was a plus one and Potassium is in group one. It's always going to be a plus one charge. And this four crisscrosses up telling me that this whole mess, O3, P-O-P, pop, O3, was a minus four charge. Now, potassium is the metal, right? So we're not going to be drawing potassium or finding out the molecular geometry of potassium because we can only do it for the nonmetals. And that's this. So nobody cares about this. We are now going to just find out specifically the phosphorus in these, uh, this compound. Now, if we're trying to find out the molecular geometry and the hybridization, the easiest thing to do is to draw the Lewis structure. It is one extra step, but once you see everything laid out, it's very easy to just identify the geometry and the hybridization. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, in this case... It seems like they're writing it in terms of a flow, right? So I'm going to take it from left to right. It seems like I have three oxygens that are bound to a phosphorus. So I'm going to say that I have one, two, three oxygens, and maybe I should make these a little bit farther apart. One, two, and three, surrounded by a phosphorus. So basically a phosphorus was in the middle, surrounded by three oxygen. And now I have another oxygen that the phosphorus is now bound to. So I have another oxygen that the phosphorus is bound to. That oxygen is now bound to another phosphorus. And that phosphorus is bound to three oxygens. So one, two, three. That's a pretty cool molecule. Now let's draw the um, valence electrons, right? If we look on a periodic table, oxygen has six valence electrons. So I'm going to draw six dots around each oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Oh my gosh. Actually, wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now each phosphorus has only five valence electrons because it's in group um, five, A, or 15. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Single bonded up. So dot to dot, dot to dot. And maybe I'll just bring this a little bit over here. Or maybe I'll shift this one over a little bit. Dot to dot. So we're making single bonds first, just to see if any of these have the octet. So there we go. It's coming along nicely. And now let's see. Now, 
Technically, before we did that, you might have been screaming at the computer, and I heard you. That's why I'm like, wait a minute, I gotta stop. I forgot to add the four electrons. We just have to make sure, did this have a charge? And yes, this did. This negative four means that we gained four electrons in terms of a dot. Now, before we drew those 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 single bonds, we should have added the four electrons, and we always add them to the more electronegative element, which in this case is oxygen. So I'm just going to try to be fair, right? Maybe I'll put one dot here, one dot here, one dot here, and one dot here. So that's the added four electrons. Now let's check for the octet rule. And in this case, this oxygen's got the octet now, two, four, six, eight. This oxygen has the octet, two, four, six, eight. This oxygen's got the octet, two, four, six, eight. Same thing with this oxygen, two, four, six, eight. And, whoop, I got, there we go. This oxygen also has two, four, six, eight electrons. The only problem are these guys up here, right? They have two, four, six, seven. So I have to make another bond. So dot to dot again, I have a double bond, and the same thing goes for this one. And now those oxygens have eight electrons, they have the octet, and the phosphorus is okay. It's a center atom, and it has the expanded octet, two, four, six, eight, 10. That's totally fine, it can have 10 electrons, right? Because phosphorus can have an expanded octet if it's the center. Now. In this case, there's two phosphorus, but to me, they look completely identical, right? They have three single bonds and one double bond. So it doesn't really matter which phosphorus we're talking about here. Maybe I'll talk about this one. Now let's find that geometry first. Now I have this chart right here for you guys to use, um, but probably your teacher or professor may want you to memorize these. So just use flashcards, do whatever you gotta do to just memorize which geometry is which. But all we have to do here is just identify how many elements are around my central atom. In this case, it's phosphorus, right? So on here, your A is representing your central atom. And it seems for phosphorus, it's a A. And now how many elements is it bound to? It's bound to four oxygens. General, that's a a x four. The x's are the elements that it's bound to. Are there any lone pairs? No, phosphorus didn't have any lone pairs. So you're just looking for a, a structure in which you have four x's around and no lone pairs. And that's this one right here. You have your a in the middle surrounded by four x's. The a atom does not have any lone pairs. So this, is tetrahedral. All right, which means that both phosphorus are tetrahedral. So maybe I'll do that, tetrahedral. Now, for your geometry, uh, not for your geometry, for your hybridization, we can go through the whole thing that we've been doing with finding out how many letters, how many things are around the atom, but there is a different way as well. Now, do you think that there is a coincidence that there are five different hybridizations and for your geometries, there are five levels? One, two, three, four, five. I don't think so, that's not a coincidence. So these hybridizations go with these electron pairs. So your first one is sp2, uh, sorry, not sp2, sp. So there's only one geometry that has sp hybridization. The second group is sp2. There's two groups, two different geometries that have an sp2 hybridization. This one is sp3 hybridized. You're kind of getting the hint here, sp3d and sp3d2. Since my tetrahedral is in the sp3 hybridized, it's always going to be sp3 hybridized. So just know any time that you have something that is tetrahedral, it's always, 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 no exception, uh, gonna be sp3. And that is the answer for this one. 
How's that? Not bad. But do you see how just drawing the uh, Lua structure can help you out a lot, especially with these types of questions? So we are done. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys, and I hope you're having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard. And if you wouldn't mind, can you please press the subscribe button if you haven't already? Because that just helps us out, gets the word out there that this YouTube channel exists. And I think it's pretty cool, right? Doing, doing questions for you guys could be better than that. I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.